Hello, lovely friends. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another one of my shows. Today, I want to teach you two different methods that I've researched and checked thoroughly. And I want to show you with evidence how you can eliminate both chlorine and fluoride from your tap water. You can reduce them significantly by almost 94%. These methods are simple and anyone can do them at home. I know that tap water has a lot of contamination and substances that could be harmful later on. I believe these two methods will be good options for you. You can eliminate chlorine and fluoride from your water. These methods are good for anyone with high fluoride and chlorine in tap water. Those who are in other places can also use this method if they think their water has a lot of flora and chlorine. Now, let's move on to the first method, which is about removing fluoride from water. So, dear friends, to eliminate fluoride from your tap water, all you need is fresh basil leaves, a fresh and simple herb that is found everywhere. In fact, in Hindi, I think it is called Tulsi. In India, basil is a sacred plant that has many benefits, and that is why it is their sacred plant. And according to official research and tests that have actually been done using basil to remove fluoride, the results of the tests were that basil was able to remove up to 94% of the fluoride present in the water. Now, what is the method? What we need is 100 milliliters of tap water. We need about 0.75 grams of fresh basil leaves, which is roughly two basil leaves. What you do is take these two basil leaves and toss them into the water, then immerse them in the water You let this water sit for a while, and the time can vary a bit. Some sources say 30 minutes, others say 8 hours, and some say 24 hours. But to be on the safe side, we can leave it for 24 hours. According to the tests they've done, this method has worked, and after this time, they checked the water and found that up to 94% of the fluoride had been removed. There is a website called the National Center for Biotechnology Information which is owned by the government. It is a government website. I will share the link to this test result, which is officially posted on this government website in the video description section, so you can go directly and read these tests and also read the results, which are on the clipboard. It only requires a little bit of effort. In my opinion, the best thing to do is to actually consider a pan or a jug for yourself, depending on the amount of water you use. For example, every few hours, fill that jug with water, measure its weight, and consider the amount of basil you need for that amount of water. When the water is ready, you can use it. Prepare the next container so you'll have clean and pure water to drink. Let's move on to how we can remove and separate chlorine from our drinking water using a very simple, homemade method if our tap water contains chlorine. There are two ways, or rather, I'd say there are about three ways to do this, and they're all really cheap and home-based methods that anyone can try. I will briefly say that one thing is that when you pour tap water into your desired container and when the water is poured into the container, a lot of bubbles are created. If the amount of chlorine is not so high and not as approved, this chlorine will bubble in the form of gas while the water is boiling. You create bubbles. When you pour the water into your container, you can use a spoon or anything you have to create lots of bubbles on the surface of the water. Let it sit for about four to six hours. During this time, the chlorine in the water will escape as gas and then you can use the water. This is the simplest method. However, if the amount of chlorine is much higher and has settled in the water, meaning it's really concentrated, then this method won't be enough. But there are two other really good methods you can try at home. One way to do this is to use vitamin C powder. It's a 2.5% vitamin C powder. You can add 30 milligrams, I think, to about 20 liters of water. You can pour it in, mix it, and let it sit overnight, and it will be completely free of chlorine. Another way is to use sodium metabisulfite, which is actually a powder that is used in the legal industry and sterilization. I want to show you this powder is not something dangerous that you might think. Now, if you want to pour this powder into water, it is not at all dangerous to consume. This powder is used in many legal products, 
for use as a preservative. N. In everything that is actually sterilized, the manufacturers themselves use this powder. America has also confirmed this, and I'll share the link so you can go and read about it. You'll see that this is the best method recommended by the association for removing chlorine from water. If you want to use this powder, you can use the same one. Now, let me show you how we should carry out these methods. Friends, when you open the water and it starts bubbling in the container, that's one way to help remove chlorine gas from the water. The more bubbles there are, the more effective it is at getting rid of the chlorine. Friends, when you turn on the water and the water in the faucet turns into bubbles, that is one of the ways that chlorine can be removed in the form of gas. The more bubbles there are, the more effective this process becomes. You can also create bubbles in Python. And the more you pour the water from a height, the more bubbles you'll get. You'll gradually notice that as the water level decreases, the number of bubbles increases. If you open more water, this will happen again. So, friends, you can add 300 milligrams of 2.5% vitamin C powder or sodium metabisulfite to this water. Mix thoroughly until well combined. And this secret is soluble in water. Let this water sit for four to six hours or for 24 hours to be safe and it will be completely free of chlorine. Following the discussion we had about basil, we used basil leaves. I wanted to show you a very good solution regarding using basil for this purpose. You can buy a small, very reasonably priced basil plant from the supermarket or from people's shops. The bush is a good helper in the kitchen. Place it next to the light every day, water it, and it will always grow. It will always bring you new leaves whenever you need to use it for this purpose. You can pick a bunch of leaves and use it for your water. You can use it in food and in cooking. These are the methods that I researched a lot and that I am using myself. I'll include the university study that tested basil and confirmed it's safe, along with the official test results posted on the government website in the video description so you can check it out. In any case, basil is a natural plant and there's no downside to using it. I hope you try out these methods and benefit from them. Until the next videos, take care.